now like my motto for life is just like when something crap is happening um to just like sit with it and just like don't there's no resistance like no nest like being wise enough to know if you need to make some changes or if you just need to like feel how you're feeling and like let the waves wash over you you know totally, what i mean instead yeah. of pulling away from them grace i want to start this interview by talking about the songwriting process so i wanted to know you know is there a set uh way that you um approach songwriting is it always like a, this the same way or you know? it tends to be for me that i kind of consider myself to be a songwriter more than a musician like i think of making art and i feel like music is currently the chosen medium for that but i feel like a lot of what draws me to write is mostly processing like emotional things that are happening in my life so um for me it usually has to start with like a lyrical concept um and i feel like if i don't believe in the lyrics that i'm writing like if i don't relate to them or feel as though it's something that's important to say that i feel like other people might benefit from um listening to not in like a benefit like they're gonna necessarily take something away from it but that they might just relate to the humanness of it yep. that's kind of what I'm trying to do so I feel like I start all of my best songs um with the lyrics first or just the idea for what I want the song to be about um and then I usually find if that if that concept is tight then the rest of the song just flows really easily from there and and even in so far as like the production and stuff it makes sense because you know what you're trying to convey emotionally just because it's a little bit more sort of like planned out mm. it doesn't necessarily mean that it's taking away from the emotion yeah if yeah, anything no. it's 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 a little bit more orchestrated but um in a way that still has relevance and if anything you can just be refined like yeah yeah with totally the live show and it just helps the technical side of things as well with yeah. um you know live shows and consistency That's i guess i wanted to touch more specifically on a lot of meaning behind the new music that you're making it feels very much like a journey nothing ever feels quite the same mm. you know between all of the songs on the new EP. Hey, yeah, I, have you listened to the? I have had a good listen. Um, I've, I've had the privilege of hearing the whole thing, um, yeah. and uh, it's it's Dance, amazing. Honey. Yeah, a lot of a lot of spice in there. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's thank a lot you. of cool stuff. Yeah, no worries. Um, so I guess it's uh, diverse. Hey, that's the thing. It's diverse, yeah. but it still feels consistent at the same time. Mm. Yeah, which is cool. Your first single, Green. Um, mm. Just wanted to sort of. I mean, I feel like to a degree, it's kind of obvious what it is. But yeah, do you want to just touch on? Well, what? well, yeah. I mean, I do want to touch on it, Tristan. <laughs> well, that's fantastic, Grace, and I'm glad that you you've agreed with, with me on that one. I'm riding with you on this question. Um, yes, it's called Green. Yes, it's about smoking weed, kids. Um, but it's not really about that to be honest like that's one very obvious analogy yeah like drug use I feel like everyone sings about drug use but what I really wanted the song to be about and what I really think that the bane is for most people is the procrastination aspect of taking drugs like for me in that particular time in my life when I didn't have a job and just a lot of things in my life were like falling apart around me I may have leaned on a particular crux which was definitely smoking more bongs than I needed to hmm. um, but I think the real one the real one that eats away at a lot of people is procrastinating and it doesn't necessarily have to be drugs like I wanted to write a song about the feeling of just wasting your life because you can't quite get a hold on I guess your own like self-discipline to just get up off the couch and like get off Instagram and just like go and do the shit that you want to do because you're kind of afraid of failing at it if you really try and like do so you think that that's the main reason of like doing you're, you're afraid of failure or? I think like I think at the time kind of like it, it can be difficult to do something that's like super authentic and not be afraid of failure because you're really like bearing yourself totally. and then it can be it can be perceived I guess as like a personal rejection if it doesn't go well mm -hmm. it's not I feel like I've come to peace with that now just like mm. doing what you want to do because it makes you happy and not really worrying too much about like any kind of external factors around mm. that yeah. but um yeah green is green is about drug use but really it's just about like anyone who is in a place where they're just not happy with their own um I guess like productivity like they don't know what their purpose is and you're just like floating through because like last year um just before like meeting Zeke and, and doing this record I was like so close to quitting music and just like because I think we all go through that wave of like I'm never gonna have a real job I need to get a degree like what the am I doing with my life mm. um, and I really lost faith in my creative 
path as well. Like I just thought like none of my songs at that point, I was like, I don't feel like I've made anything that really jives with what I love to listen to and like, like conveys what I like to listen to. Um, so yeah, green was kind of like the starting point there of just like writing about those feelings and kind of being like, Fuck. So this was the first song that you, um, wrote off the EP. Dissipate, I think technically was the first because I had the chorus for a long time, yeah. but I, I didn't have like the second section and any, it was just one of those ones that was like floating around. So on the subject of dissipate, um, yeah, it, it feels, um, I guess a little bit majestic, um, yeah, a little bit sort of, um, I don't know, it takes you on a journey of like a, almost like a healing quality that's, to it maybe. That's a really nice thing to say. Oh, thanks. I was just that's being good. honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so c- can you maybe touch on, um, yeah, sort of the yeah. like background behind the lyrical um, meaning yeah. of that song? Um, well, yeah, like I said, like Green was kind of, kind of, let's consider Green to be the first, it's the first track on the album like the way that the album is listed and I kind of wanted each of the songs to like take you on a particular journey Mm. um so at the start of 2019 there was just like a bunch of crapola that like went down all at the same time um like the first guy that I had produced music with uh was a guy called Charlie Young and he drowned and that was pretty sad that he drowned it's pretty unexpected um and it's sad even now because I'm like, that was the first guy that I worked with and it sucks that he can't hear this record now because I think that he would have really liked it. Um, so that was like one of those things that kind of triggered. So it was like Charlie passed away. Um, my sister was getting married and love her to death, but she was totally a bridezilla. Um, so that was like very intense. I moved houses like three times in this, this is like all the first six months, I lost two jobs. My car broke down. My dad had like two or three heart attacks. Like it was just, it was just one of those like shit storms. Mm. So I really wanted the EP to kind of like start at that beginning point because I felt as though for me, 2019 was a real like journey because of that, because it was so intense and I was just had a lot of breakdowns and a lot of really emotional things happen. Um, so the way that it is structured is deliberately so that dissipate sits at the end and does feel like that healing journey. Cause that song is kind of supposed to be my ode to like mindfulness and trying to deal with some of that anxiety. Cause I have a real issue with like social anxiety and dissipate is the song of just like like the reason that the lyrics are quite simple and they all kind of center around like what i imagine is like lying in bed with someone just like chatting with them like when you're really really comfortable Mm. so like all of the lyrics are really small things like the the whole thing about like stroke my skin you know what i mean just like just the one thing you're just focusing on that one feeling you know Mm. um and for me i guess like when i sing that's the time that i and when I write, that's the time when I get to access that feeling of like complete removal of any anxiety. Like I'm just doing the thing that I know I'm good at and I feel completely in the moment and there's no other thoughts in my head except the performance. And I, I wanted to write a song about that, about just being super present because um, I guess that's what I learned was the only way to come out of such a crappy time was to just be really present in each moment and just be like, cool, I'm going to ride this wave because I can't hide from it. It's coming. Yeah. I, I feel like now like my motto for life is just like when something crap is happening um, to just like sit with it and just like don't – there's no resistance, like no ne- – ne- like being wise enough to know if you need to make some changes or if you just need to like – feel how you're feeling and like let the waves wash over you you know what i mean instead of pulling away from them Mm. yeah so that's what that song's about it's really interesting you talk about how you know you you might experience a bit of social anxiety in my experience the people that have told me that are often the most to to my perception the most charismatic people the most Mm. um and, and i've heard that from a lot of uh artists that i respect as well and I do find that, you know, an interesting thing that I thought I'd just bring up. I, I think um, that it's because I feel like um, I feel this real need to like be on, you know what I mean? Sure. To be like bubbly and yeah, and to be charismatic, I suppose. And for what reason? Um, I think I have like 10 siblings, so I grew up in quite a big family. Yeah. Um, so on my mum's side, it's like split. My parents got divorced. There's like six on my dad's side, seven on my mum's side. So there was nine of us in the house. Yeah. Wow. Um, 
And I feel like in my family, like the currency of love is laughter. So if you're being like funny and extroverted, I think that as a kid, I just learned like that was the way to like access some of that attention when you have so many other kids around you Mm. to kind of compete with on some level. So so it's almost like second nature now. Yeah. It's not like you have to try and do that. Yeah. I have like highly developed coping mechanisms for that anxiety because like naturally I'm quite introverted and I really love to just be alone. But most people when they meet me don't really get that energy. Yeah, for sure. I <laughs> no. definitely didn't, didn't think that for no, a second. No, because like I love people. That's the thing. I, I love people and I love being around people. It's just that like if, I, if I'm if i not in the right headspace, it's so, it's super intense and really draining. And like, yeah. again, that's one of the reasons why I, I have in the past smoked a lot of weed um, is because for me, weed's one of those things that helps me to relax and to feel like I want to be around other people. Because mm-hmm. I think sometimes if you're introverted, the way that um, – our like culture is structured can make you feel like there's something wrong with you because you're that way because it sure. seems like everyone else loves going to parties and doing but do these they things really? but do they really because i'm like man i'm fucking taking breaks just standing in the bathroom doing nothing just being like <laughs> oh when can yeah. i go home yeah. <laughs> like, i think that's another good point it's just that sometimes unless i'm fucked up that's it it's the only time <laughs> it's almost like a it's almost like a mexican standoff between people because everyone's so obsessed with putting their best foot forward <laughs> that like then it's like the knockoff effect of like yeah. oh these everyone seems fine and like you know yeah. we're all crumbling under true. underneath a little bit you know true that's that's it be honest it. about it be up front mm. that yeah. i mean I, i'm trying to just be up front and sh- i i'm like quite um i have pretty chronic foot and mouth so i feel like i'm generally like that <laughs> <laughs> anyway yeah. but um that's that's part of the reason why i write music because i want people to listen to it like my whole purpose for listening to music a lot of the time is like trying to find someone who is explaining experience that I've had and listening to it and feeling like a bomb over my soul being like, Oh, I'm not alone, Mm. you know? And you can just like turn on that song whenever you feel sad or if you, even if you feel happy and you want to like access that, but you can just be there and be like, this person gets it. You know, it's like, yeah, you want people to just be real about it. I think it's good for me, for me to be honest about like kind of hating parties and being pretty antisocial because because I'm friendly and like confident in that way, mm. it's like there's a lot of there's a lot of people like that floating around out there who are like, yeah, uh, it's almost like there's um, there's a fear in. Uh, I really appreciate what you're saying because I think more and more people need to understand that it's okay to like feel that way, process it, and um, kind of express it you know, to everyone else, um, mm. which is what, you, what you're doing. Yeah. Just so people don't think they're the only ones. Exactly. You know, yeah. yeah. I really envy extroverts though. It looks like <laughs> they have a good time. I don't know. I always thought that, yeah. but, um, yeah, uh, grass is always greener, right? Dude, you know, those <laughs> people who you're like, you're like out at a party or something and maybe you have had a good night and then everyone wants to do like kick ons mm. and, and maybe they want to come back to your house and you're like, um <laughs> yeah <laughs> no. no yeah legit and you'll see them and they'll like be posting stories together and they've all been hanging out for like two or three days i'm like i wish like yeah. i don't know how the fuck you guys are doing it what do you want to talk about yeah like, yeah there's so many people like i feel like man seriously i was thinking about this the other day um my drummer ezra is like quite quiet but he i would describe him as being more extroverted which is interesting right because he's quiet but he likes to like be around people, but they want to be around each other silently. Whereas me, I feel like I have shit to do. So if we're hanging out, we better be talking about something. So it's kind of intense, but I'm like, why would I not be alone? If, you know, if I could be alone, if we're just going to like sit together and be like, Mm. what's the point? Like, (laughs) what's the point? I should just be by myself. At least then I can like fart freely. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) <laughs> it's, uh, I'm, I'm actually quite the same like you know, I, I really no, I mean, I'm, uh, that, that <laughs> definitely on yeah that works on so many levels for me <laughs> um yeah. i get you I see, I <laughs> you feel you. it you feel it <laughs> these cushions could talk <laughs> these cushions could talk man i tell you oh yeah too much information gross i'm sorry i, I derailed it <laughs> No, it's, it was derailed in an authentic, honest yeah, place. Yeah, I know. That's great. Oh. Oh, good, for, good for us. Yeah, you know? good for us. Look. <laughs> if, I <laughs> if, I, if I had one if I had one stored right now, I would do it into the mic and end it like that. <laughs> Loud and proud. Yeah. yeah. The silent and violent ones are the ones that I'm... Um, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> Let's change the subject. Yeah, cool, um, cool, cool. No, cool. that's cool. Um uh, uh, yeah. Let's talk about trauma. 
into a trauma journey. With, with regards to farts or <laughs> <laughs> um let's not get that deep let's let's save that for next time anyway. yeah. grace thank you so much no we'll problem have to end this here. i'm having way too much fun i need to need to go to bed um <laughs> yes. thanks so much for coming in no and problem we really appreciate it. that was fun thank you for having me oh, no problem it's good yeah. it's good